Well, welcome back, Happy Fabricators. It's quickly turning to winter here in the Pacific Northwest. It's a little chilly out in the shop, but today we are going to do a cast aluminum thread repair. You'll find out very quickly that once people realize you have a welder, they will bring any and everything to you to see if you can fix it. Repair jobs are never lacking. What we have here, I believe, is some sort of power glide or valve body for a Kubota tractor. And what happened is the main input for the hydraulics on this transmission, I believe it is, or some sort of shifting system. It's got all the valve journals on the back. A large banjo bolt, which you don't know what a banjo bolt is. It's basically a bolt with a passageway through it so that the bolt can be used for transporting fluids and also tighten a fitting down. So there's a fitting that comes in and a banjo bolt goes in here and this is all stripped out. And the client or whoever, somebody ahead of time, it looks like they've tried to fix this here with a heel coil or something of that sort and that failed as well. So we're gonna try to get them back up on the road. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, even though I'm not gonna be filling the hole with weld, there's gonna be some welding involved, and this thing is just nasty dirty. So we're gonna spray this thing down with some engine degreaser. Whether we welded this hole up completely or do what we're gonna do, in either case, we want to remove this whole helicoil. So we're gonna get in here and get this all cleaned out. Then I'm gonna do just a little bit of prep around the hole. The more I'm looking at this, this might not actually be cast aluminum. It's kind of hard to tell. Sometimes parts like this are cast and then the faces are machined off, but this is actually looking like a better quality aluminum than cast. So that will play to our advantage, but there still looks like casting marks here. So it just might be a really clean cast. We will find out as soon as we start welding it. Okay, so now that we got this thing all cleaned out, I just kinda wanna go over what my thoughts are on how I'm gonna tackle this. So I could fill this thing all the way up with weld and then redrill it and retap it. But there's a couple reasons why I feel like there's better options. One, when I start welding inside of this, it's gonna heat this part up quite a bit. The intention of this hole here is to hold threads tight enough that this hydraulic thing can not leak. What welding and putting all that heat in that aluminum is gonna do, aluminum is the opposite of steel. So when you heat it up and cool it down, it's actually gonna soften instead of harden. So that thread isn't gonna hold quite as well. What my thoughts are is this hole or the hole that we're tapping is a 14 millimeter or it's roughly around half an inch ish. And then the overall diameter of this flat spot that we have to work with here is about an inch and a quarter. So what I'm thinking, we're gonna set this thing up in the drill press and we're gonna plunge and clean out this hole and open it up to seven eighths of an inch. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one inch 6061 rod and I'm gonna drill it out on the lathe and tap it. And then I'm going to machine this down to where it is basically a tolerance fit to the hole that I drilled. So this 6061 round bar is gonna have a harder Rockwell or hardness to it to be able to hold these threads better than if I were to fill this thing with 54, 53, 56 welding rod. So now we got this nice little slug all machined out. To go down in here, it just starts in there, which is perfect. But there's just one little hiccup. Remember that thing I was telling you earlier about double checking everything yourself? Well, 
I just broke my own rule. The tap that the customer bought and provided was a 14 millimeter by 1.5 pitch. And I did not double check that it was the same as our banjo bolt, and it's not. So now I gotta go track down the right tap. So it may take me a little bit to do that, but I will see you in just a second. Okay, we are back. After looking into this, I have no clue what this thread pitch is. It's somewhere in between a 12 mil and a 14 mil. It's nothing SEA or standard thread. I don't think they make a 13 mil, and if they do, I couldn't find one. So what our solution is, I ended up finding this half 13 flange bolt. So since we machined out our hole completely and we're replacing it with a completely new insert, we kind of have the freedom to change that thread pitch. So I'm just gonna make a call. We're gonna change that thread pitch to a half 13. Now, you may say that the downside to that is it is not as fine thread as whatever this is, and I totally agree with you. I could not find a half 20 in town, but to compensate for that, we're also able to drill out where our insert's gonna go almost three quarters of an inch. By boring this out, and making our insert just a little bit deeper, we're going to regain the strength that we would have lost in that by getting even more threads. Now I already remade this insert here because you already watched me make one and I'm gonna do it the same way, just with a different thread pitch. So a quick little trick that I like to use whenever I have to shorten a bolt or cut it on the threads is I always like to just take a standard nut and run it on ahead of time. And what that does is when you go to cut these threads off, there's always goobers that land on the inside of the thread pitch. And if you just have a standard nut on the inside of your cut ahead of time, when you go and run that off, that's going to stand those threads back up and kind of align any of those burrs with the threads and lessen the chance that when you go to screw it on afterwards that it's going to ajar or get bound up at the wrong angle. And there we have it. We've got a nice, clean little banjo bolt there. Matches our other one. It's just a little bit longer because we've got a little more thread depth. Fits in our new insert real nice and tight. Threads aren't sloppy or anything. So next we're gonna get this thing ready for weld. First I'm gonna take some acetone and we're gonna clean off our bung from any cutting oils or contaminants that were on it. And then if you'll notice, I Earlier, I put a chamfer on this hole, and then I have a chamfer on this guy. And what that's gonna allow us to do is once we press this guy in with a chamfer on the edge and a chamfer on the edge of our insert here, that's gonna leave us a nice clean groove to lay a weld in. And then when we're done, we can go over and surface that plate, and that's gonna allow us to still have some meat down in there that's holding it once we surface the top of that weld off. Okay, so I'm getting ready to press this thing in here. I'm gonna use the drill press as a press. I don't have a hydraulic press, and honestly, for aluminum, you probably don't wanna use a hydraulic press just because you can overdo it and end up smashing your part and stuff. So I've got a chunk of aluminum on top of the vise here with a piece of cardboard, to hopefully cushion this just a little bit. Got it squared up to the vise, we're all cleaned up. Something else I wanna consider is I don't necessarily want to rely entirely on the integrity of my weld. Even though I not, know it's gonna be a good weld, but I wanna just be able to know that this insert is gonna stay in there. And if anything, the weld is gonna be a sealer versus doing the majority of the holding. So what I mean by that is I machined that slug to where it was within a thousandth of tolerance of this hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take map gas torch and just heat up the hole 
around it and that's going to help that part expand a little bit and just kind of burn off any more impurities that are left over in here and then i've got the insert in a jar of ice water here and we're cooling that down so that's going to shrink that down just a little bit and allow that thing to be pressed in there so that we've got a nice tight bond on the walls of that thing and we're not relying entirely on the weld. So we got both of those things holding it. We got it all pressed in here, nice and flush. I had to set the camera down. Okay, so the setup we're gonna be using to weld this guy up, we have a Number five standard call it, 330 seconds tungsten, CK Worldwide. Gonna be running probably about 15 CHF on the gas. We're gonna run just a little lower on the frequency, probably around 100 on the frequency. And then I'm gonna turn my balance down to probably about 40%-ish. Just crank those amps all the way up and just use it as we need it. I'm just plugged into 110 right now, so I got 140. We'll see, I might have to plug it into the 220. 332nd, 53, 56 filler rod. Always strike an arc on a scrap piece of metal before the customer's part. <laughs> We're gonna be pushing it to do this on 140 amps, but I think it can be done. Okay, so overall this repair went pretty smoothly. As you can see, we got it resurfaced. There's gonna be a copper washer on either side of the piece that's gonna get sandwiched in there and it should do the job. We had a little hiccup in the middle there, but we were able to change course and come up with a solution. A lot of times if somebody has a job like this for you or if you're doing it yourself, to just think out of the box, there's multiple ways to solve those pain points or problems for you or for your customer. And a lot of times if it's for a customer, they really don't care how it gets done as long as it gets done in a quality fashion and it will last the test of time. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those notifications. Hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and go build something.